In three. A moment, Witcher. You strike me as a man of the world. Are you familiar with Gwent? No, and I don't have time to learn. But the rules are quite simple. Come, let's play. All right, well, everybody, I hope you heard that. I'm not sure if you did. I'm trying to do an audio cut in. This is Shifu of the Cards along with Code Excel, and we are Gwent After Dark. I'd like to thank everybody over the weekend. We had some good success on Podbean.com. People watching or listening. <laughs> um, first week of shows went really well. What'd you think, Code Excel? Yeah, I think it was really good, man. Like, uh, I had lots of fun, had lots of chats, played lots of Gwent, although not necessarily on the show. So. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, uh, what do you call him? Uh, Gwentleman did something interesting that I think we might want to copy and use for one of our segments one day. They did a uh, challenger series where each one of them took one of the popular meta decks and played. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Although, one thing I would say is, A, I'm not a plagiarist. To B, um, also, one thing that actually is worth considering is that uh, these things might not be representative over such a small sample size. So, as a mathematician, that actually really grinds my gears. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right, so, let me put the microphone close. I always have this problem where I start it far away and no one can hear me. Um, Today's, this week, we're going to do a week dedicated, uh, and again, just to start over, I'd like to thank everybody on Podbean for listening. Thank everybody on Twitch for watching. Um, it's been a really great week, and this week we have, um, I see Ake in the, in the room. We, we're going to do some fun stuff on Podbean. Um, we're going to do a beginner's week, and we're going to have some pretty good shows. We have them lined out for the week, actually, believe it or not, um, but Wednesday... Code XL, would you like to be my shoutcaster in crime? I already won the tournament, man, so no, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm joking, yeah. man, I'm joking. I know. No, <laughs> no, I'll be seeing you there. Yeah, so I'm very excited about that. So Wednesday, Code XL and I will be shoutcasting together. Um, I had a good review from another website about our show, by the way, Code XL. I didn't share it with you. Uh, they said that we had a great synergy in our very exciting nighttime talk show. Wow, that... That does sound like a proposal. Yeah. <laughs> Very enough. And oh, by the way, did you, did you know? I have something to tell you. Yeah? Did you know that we are the longest running night talk show in Gwent history? No way. No, yeah. I, literally, I have no long-term memory whatsoever. My brain just <laughs> melts it after every single one of these talk shows. Right, right, yeah. Still, still long. Mojo is in the house. Hello, Mojo. We are hoping to get you back on the show. You were fantastic on Friday's show. If you hadn't seen it... Um, episode five on podcast and on YouTube. Uh, Mojo was fantastic and can't wait to get him solo. Uh, it'd be fun stuff. So today, or Codexo, do you want to say anything before the show started? Um, just, hi guys. <laughs> Welcome to the poll. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So we got a pretty cool show, I think today, um, this week, actually. Let me see if I can get this done. And there's me. I should have switched that before. So Gwent After Dark is every Monday through Friday, uh, 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. The Paso Flores sign up is this Friday, May 6th, and we will be shoutcasting it May 10th. M maybe could X on I if he doesn't win it. Um, it'll be the following Wednesday. So we'll have. I'm sure. I'm, what I'm aiming for is our Wednesday night telecasts or podcasts are going to be tournament action every week. That'd be kind of exciting. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and again, GwenAfterDark.podcast.com. You can become a patron by donating even just a dollar to us to help our get a show uh, more established. We'd really appreciate that. And here we go with the show. So uh, what we're going to start off with, if you see the little presentation here, as it as it goes back to the oh we oh look at that I went all the way back I go all the way back. don't look at all this if, if you're on the podcast you're seeing nothing so it doesn't matter but if you're on the Twitch interface <laughs> if you're on the Twitch chat. Don't look at anything I just showed you. Okay, we're starting from the beginning. So what is Gwent and a beginner's guide? That's what we're going to focus on all week this week. Um, and Gwent started with The Witcher. Now, Codex, so we haven't talked about any of this. So I like to keep it fresh on the show. Did you play The Witcher? Yes. Great game. Um, only played two and three, though. One was... Like, actually, I was planning on playing one, except that for, you know, as with old releases, sometimes they just bug out the crap on the new operating systems, so haven't actually played Witcher 1, but hey, I think it's a, from what I hear, it's a missable experience, so. 
<laughs> well, all right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So CDPR, don't listen to that part. That's uh, his opinion. That's Codexel. No, I'm playing. Uh, no, Sorry. We, okay. Okay, let's rewind this. Cut, cut, cut. Go back. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I mean, no. Yeah, no. We say our own opinion is good. CDPR is good about that. Um, I also I had no experience with um, The Witcher until The Witcher 3. And then after playing The Witcher 3, fell in love with Gwent, then read the books uh, for the seven, I think there are now. So I have four sevenths done. Then nice. I went back and played The Witcher 2, which I thought was amazing. And um, that's kind of that was that was your first. So Witcher 2 was your first experience with The Witcher? Yeah, it's a lot harder than The Witcher 3, combat wise, anyway. I mean, I think it's, I think Witcher 2 is a lot harder. Oh my god, like, yeah. Like, like I, I actually like my games hard. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I was completely addicted to Darkest Dungeon for a while, for example. But, um, I mean, I think it's the same kind of pull that it draws me to games like, uh, PvP games like Gwent. It's just, it's gonna be harder, right? Because the guy's on the other end is actually really intelligent and not just artificially so. I, I agree. Yeah, uh, I, Witcher Two combat was a lot more difficult. Like if you fought a group of Neckers in Witcher Two, you had a chance of getting overwhelmed and destroyed. I mean, it, it was, yeah. it was. Can ridiculous. you imagine Neckers doing the same to you in three? Like, right. yeah, just like Neckers coming along and just scratch you, and you're like, oh no, ow. Well, right. well I guess I'll just drink a swallow potion now. Ow. Yes. Yeah, there was no drinking of swallow potions in Witcher Two. There was yeah, yeah. dodging. Yeah. Like, oh. uh, I mean, th there's a line in uh, in Heroes of the Storm that just that I'm reminded of, like the, the Raven Lord, well, the the Gravekeeper says, "Well, next time, I suggest dodging." <laughs> there you go. So, for those of you, this this what this is going to be for experts. This may be a little boring, although you may learn some stuff you didn't know before, hopefully. Uh, but this is really this week is focused on the beginners, and we'll be doing a series of YouTube videos for beginners on. Gwent. Um, I think that it is a. Uh, I know Codexo believes it well. That is one of the best games, uh, card games that I, that I've ever played. What about you, Codexo? Where, where are your feelings? Um, nothing will match up to Pokemon trading card game. Nothing. Nice. Okay, I played that too. No, I, I'm joking. I, I prefer Gwent. I okay. Prefer Gwent. Gwent. Okay. But, I, mean, <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, all right, well, okay, but, Pokemon. But you know what I mean, though. When you you know when you have things from your childhood, like they'll yes. hold a special place in your heart, even though you are crap at them, even though like you. You just collected the crap out of the, the cards, and you just were like the, sh the the best player in school or whatever. But you actually just sucked balls. Like, eh, that's just how, that's just how it is, right? Like, they will always have a nostalgia for you. That I, eventually, I expect Witcher to have Witcher Gwent to have for me, right? Well, it's funny you mention that. One of my one of my favorite games that I played, card game that I don't think anybody in the world played, or certainly nobody watching, was a game called Legend of the Five Rings. You ever heard of it? I've heard of it. I've never played it. I mean, I think that might be a bit before my time, potentially. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, yeah, probably. Sorry. But it was, no, I'm just, I'm, dude, I'm playing. Uh, it, was, it was Samurai's, uh, it's Samurai Fantasy, believe it or not. And they had different clans. Very fascinating game. But Gwent is, is the best. And so, for me anyway. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at Gwent. We're going to look at how to get started. I think we have some exciting segments coming up. Uh, I kind of sent, the, I, what I do is I send the slides to Codexo as, in a way of show prep. And then we just kind of riff off each other and just and, and then talk about whatever comes to our mind. I think it, it's worked pretty good. Um, so the the the, yeah. the way Gwent started was Gwent, uh, Gwent started as a collectible card trading game inside The Witcher Three, uh, and I did a show on this on the second one. So I'm, I'm gonna let Codex I'll talk a little bit when he's ready until he can get his thoughts together. But uh, it was it was a for me it was a very fun game. Like I said in episode two. You had to collect all the cards. Um, Codexo, how was your experience with Gwent inside The Witcher, and did you get all the cards? Oh, I loved it. I mean, one thing I want to one thing I, I want to point out that I think is great is you said collectible trading card game, and it's quite funny in the sense that like the players trade cards with you when you beat them, and you're like, "Ha! I'm gonna trade them one way only." <laughs> like you, lo you lose, you don't give away your best gold to them, right? Right. You just take all their best cards. And you're like, "Ha ha ha." Wasn't that so, cool though? Uh, Wasn't that cool that you could do oh, that? Amazing. Yeah. It was, a, it was a great experience. I thought that, um, actually, I was talking about it with Mojo earlier, that I thought it was a really great experience as a mini game. Not amazingly balanced, but just so amazingly atmospheric. Like, literally, the number of times I would just be staying up, like, way past, like, reasonable sleeping time, just, like, spamming Gwent games before bed. Like, not even, like, exploring the world that it was encapsulated in, but, like, just, just playing Gwent. Yeah, at some, yeah, at some part, at some point for me, the game be didn't become The Witcher Three. It became Gwent, and I just wanted to find all the cards. It like became a Pokemon kind of thing, collect them all. 
I could never get the third crone. It drove me crazy <laughs> finding these stupid cards, and it was it was fun, so much fun. Well, the best part was like you know when you were just playing like like the Witcher Three as a mini game. Like you had Gwent, and then there was the mini game attached to it. <laughs> I like 3. it. Yeah, I, like I mean that. it's the biggest mini game of all time, but it was actually like you know <laughs> like a game within a game. It's so it's so method, bro. It's so method. Yes, yes. So, um, what was your was there was there a particular deck or uh, was there a faction you used primarily in the duels? Did you did you play well, Blood and uh, Blood and Wine? Yes, 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 and yes. I mean, Nilfgaard was just the strongest faction. I think a lot of people just gravitate to the strongest faction because, like, they just like what the fuck poning stuff. Like, I mean, just with the the spy spam and decoys. And basically decoys pulling back spies into your hand, which gave you card advantage, and then you played spies for ridiculous card advantage, and that would just happen for like the first eight rounds of a of a game. Like those were just always the most exciting games, he said sarcastically. Um <laughs> like but Nilfgaard was just powerful, so you know, I think people just gravitate towards Nilfgaard and, and Northern Realms quite normally because A, they're strong and B, they're fairly straightforward to play. Like you just get big numbers and you laugh at your opponent who's just cowering in the corner. Which is funny because I know that you're a math teacher enthusiast. One of the slides, I don't know if you saw, I did that. I did a slide in there. I pre, if you saw it, I did a slide specifically for you that I can't wait to get to. I think you'll, I think you'll like it. Don't spoil it. I know. I'm excited Seriously. about it. I'm excited about it. Seriously. Why do you do this I don't every know. single time? <laughs> I don't know. I'm bad at secrets. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. So, Nilfgaard. Funny you mention that my favorite faction was Monsters. Just because I love the muster ability and just swarming the board with just tremendous amounts of creatures. They remember because I think wasn't there five vampires that could come out with one card? Mm-hmm. I just I just love that. I thought that was fascinating. Okay, so, so y'all, are, go ahead. You know, I just realized you're just you're just one of the bad guys, aren't you? You just like seeing the world burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a good time. Okay, so we're gonna look at the next slide, and for those of you who didn't see the second show. Or uh, shame on you, honestly. But <laughs> this was what the original board looked like inside The Witcher 3. Um, it looks a little different than it does today. But I thought, I mean, what is your critique of this original board? I thought it was pretty classy. It's, it's, very, it's very effective. It, I mean, from a pure, like, effectiveness standpoint, it's just, it does everything that you need. Like, I, it shows the rounds, it shows the points, it shows who's ahead. It shows what faction, it shows everything. The one critique I would say is that it's a little bit unclear um, what the hand is. The hand, I mean, only very experienced players will be able to see at a glance what cards they have. Whereas, like, these days, the artwork is so good in, in, in the current Gwent, and they've so stylized and emphasized, you know, like, I, I think the way that things are graphed so that your eyes are drawn to your hands in such a way that it's much clearer what's in your hand. Like, that's that's amazing. They put so much work into that, whereas it, before it was just, oh, here's some artwork, here's some numbers, things. Like, they've managed to convey so much more information and not cluttered up everything so much more, which is, you know, a lot of credit to them. That's quite difficult to pull off. And, you know, it's funny. as I, I played, I played this, When I played this game and it first came out, I was working at a big, a big retail chain called Best Buy. I don't know if they have them over there, but... It's where you sell. It's an electronic superstore, and it's funny mm -hmm. that even this simplistic version, we can look back and call it a simplistic version of Gwent. People were really flummoxed by the complexity of it. Like, just you'd be surprised. I don't know if you ran across this, but people had a hard time figuring out how to keep score, how to play it, mm -hmm. what went where. Did you find that too? No, nah. I mean I'm good <laughs> at maths, but like I'm probably what? in the minority. Um, one thing actually, are you still showing the board? I am. Yes. Yeah. Quick, quick test then. Can you name all the cards that are showing? Okay, well, Scorch Fog. And I believe this is, so this is Nilfgaard Faction, so I, no. Siege Engineer. Siege Engineer. No, 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 that's a Siege Technician, which is the Medic, but yeah. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit for those that, uh, and I can't really, is that Vesemir in the six? Yep, Vesemir. Nice. Okay, um, and the other six, Catapult, not sure. And that's, 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 the, that's, that's the Siege Engineer. So the zero is the Siege Technician, the Z, six is the Siege Engineer. And that's Letho, if I believe, on the 10. Correct. Yeah. All right, what's on the board? Oh, man. The left one. What's the left six? I, I don't know. Who's that? 
a Sierra Van and a Heed. Right. Wow. Hey, look at you. Hey. And All right. What's the other six? I have no idea. Fringilla Vigo. Beast. All right. What's the what's the what's the Northern Rounds guy playing? Uh, that that ten is that is um. Stennis. John Natalis. Natalis, you're right. You're right. All right. What about the six? And that's uh, Trebuchet. Trebuchet. Okay. What's the ten on the right hand side? I don't have a ten on the right hand side. I think we're looking. At, oh, you're yeah. looking about the the hero? No, um, on the right hand side, there's a ten that's showing like uh like it's the medic, you know. It's above your your spot your your picture, but that was that was there before. Oh, that's uh, Corvis. No, that's Menno Cohorn. Cohorn, yeah. All right. Yeah. What about what about leaders? I mean, that's you're the hardest part. You're killing me. Are, you're killing me. Look at leaders you. Leaders are the hardest part. I don't remember. I don't think I remember the the the, the bottom one necessarily. Well, that was interesting. I know the top one. That was interesting for those that don't know. In the original Gwent, there was only one leader per faction, but four different. I think four four different variations mm -hmm. of that leader. Um, mm -hmm. And I, now I remember Northern Realms. So Northern Realms, um, it was of course uh, Full Test, but there yep. was Full Test the Games Master. Oh, so close! Siege Master. Siege Master. Uh, yeah, I, and what do you remember? Do you, do you remember what that does? I, he adds uh, plus two to the siege roll, right? He uh, put, oh, he puts the commander. He, he puts the commander's mean, horn. He, he commands horns. Yeah. So yeah. Puts the commander's horn. Yeah. And right. then there was and one, um, the the one of the uh, full test pulled the clear skies. Uh huh. Yeah. I, I forgot what he was called. Do you know what he was called? Oh God, no, I don't. I don't. I, I I'm amazed that you. But Siege Master is very very distinctive. You can you can tell Siege Master just from his chessboard, and he's like, mm, I'm the I'm the boss of the world. <laughs> um, what about? Do you remember? Do you do you remember what the the the, the Emir version is then. Now see, no. Now see, I didn't play enough Nilfgaard to remember Emir. I played a lot of Northern Realms though. I think that's the one where, where it shows shows three random cards, or, or was it two random cards? But like, I can't remember that was like, it was the the Impatient or something, something like that, or the Relentless. I think the Relentless was one of them. But yeah, it's a pretty cool board. I think I, I think it's it's great. I mean, it really shows that how memorable and atmospheric a game is that. After so long of not playing this game, it's such a completely different game that we remember almost all the parts. Yes, and I I just remembered. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and how wild is it that you could use three decoys, three scorches back then? Yeah, scorch not being silver is just insane. Like, well, not there were no yeah, there were no colors. There were no bronze, silvers, or golds. It was just uh, yeah. a card. Yeah, I mean, okay, there were golds technically. <laughs> oh, you mean the well, the top left, the the. Yeah, the I think sun? I think you gotta call those golds, right? I mean, like they had yeah. this gold like side and then like made this amazing sound, and we're like, ooh, like when you got when you drew them. I mean, <laughs> I, that that is a hilarious, hilarious mechanic that could only work in a single player game, right? Well, like okay, well, uh, now, okay, this is a good question for you. I I think maybe I'm the minority here. I think that there should be a classic version. You know how if you play you play Hearthstone. Yeah, well, okay. I did. I, mean, I did too. I did. Yeah, I, I don't see the point of uh, going back now. Yeah, I don't either. Um, but you, they have like those arena brawls or the um, sure. tavern brawls, whatever. Yep. Wouldn't it be cool to have? And, and you could. Yeah, I mean, you're very honest. You'll tell me no. Wouldn't it be cool to have this as a as a as a, a sub game, like a you know crazy variant, the original Gwent? No. <laughs> Sorry. I mean. <laughs> just because, just because, like, you'd have to change some things. Like, you'd have to change how decoy work. You'd have to change how spies work. And at that point, the game is completely different. <laughs> but like, I mean, at what point do you do you do you stop and say, no, we'll keep that in. We won't change that to like our new concepts. Well, why not just put like, it all in? Like, just you get what you got. What ten cards or eleven cards off the start, and then just whatever you got, you got. There are no mulligans. There's no draw. There's just whatever you have. Go. Well, I mean, like, I just feel like you'd, you'd be offering an inferior version of Gwent that would divide the population for no good reason. I mean, Dota has the same problem, that if you have a small enough population size, especially during certain times, you, dec you decrease the quality of your multiplayer environment because you split up the remaining population into smaller groups. And there's no saying. good reason to do so. <coughs> like, okay, I see what you're saying. <coughs> you think it'd be it's hard popular? Enough, it's hard enough for me to find a game... <coughs> Like, at this time, I, I, it's really, really hard for me to find a, like a fair matchup 
in a game like with without losing MMR basically. You know? Don't you think it'll swell once it gets released to Steam though? The the numbers? Oh yeah, absolutely. But the thing is like even if you did, it would just be unless it provided something a, a positive side variation that people actually would get some extra thing out of there's no point splitting up your population ever i mean dota is not exactly a small game is it no no well i've got a question for you now we've never talked about this and this is kind of off topic for the new players but just something that struck me um do you think there should be rewards for legend or rank 15 like card backs or titles what do you what do you think there will be i just came to mind and i was just curious your thoughts on it I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't think that's necessary, personally. I think that Gwent's um, core idea and core background comes from that of, like, everyone just plays it just, you know, for, for fun. And, like, you know, there, there, there are tournaments, but it's, it's like, well, I, the feeling I got from Witcher 3 was that this is just, everyone plays it because it's addictive and it's just, it's community building and... What's the point? Like for me, I don't see the point in the elitism of giving card backs. I mean, I'm sure I would be one of the people, and you would be as well, just to earn this thing because that would just be the thing. But like, I don't care about it. Fair and enough. I hope no. I I hope that Gwent is a, an all inclusive game that like beginners and experts and people who are willing to try crazy decks like KBT are equally welcome. I love KBT. Uh, King Black 2, for those of you that are uh, new to the game, he is, and I can't recommend him enough in all honesty. He is actually one of the people that make great videos and is a truly good person, um, which is hard to find. I would recommend his stuff at the highest possible recommendation. King Black 2 on YouTube uh, and on Twitch, he's phenomenal. And he's even a better person than his, than his videos, and they're top-notch. Um, okay, so that's the original board. Now the new board is right here we see uh, a little bit of it uh, let's see if I can zoom in I think I can there we go so we see a lot of differences and I don't want to belabor this point too much because I know that people have seen this and are playing it currently but if you're new to the game that's even that's the Gamescon version so in other words what's happened with Gwen is it went from that simple version to this version and then to the current version we see now that I don't have a picture of but it's much more laid out it's beautiful the scores are very obvious um, couldn't you have just like I mean you, maybe we shouldn't do this on stream but couldn't you just have like pr print screened your, your game because like this makes it uh, this doesn't do it justice this makes it look like so bad <laughs> thanks like, thank you so much an awkward, sorry but like no, I really don't want to tra detract away from what CDPR have done because <laughs> CDPR have made this game look amazing I mean the, the, inter the UI is so much better the board is so clear what's going on all the time. Like, I mean, it, once you're experienced, you will know exactly what's going on all the time from the sounds and the way the board looks. And also, the premium cards are just to die for. Like, I mean, anybody who's seen, like, premium Vilgaforts or Wiggly Forts, as I like to call him, is just blown away. You know what? I could, it. you know what? Now that I think about it, we're going to kind of go off, off my slideshow that I worked so hard on. Thank you so much for that. Sorry. I'm going to, uh, no, you're right. I think what I can do is I can open up my game. If you give me a second, let me put it on a different screen so y'all can not watch the horrible clicking. Uh, we're doing a little bit of off topic stuff here. We're gonna, not off topic, but we're doing a little around the, the side here. I think it'll be worth it. I think that um, Code Excel is 100% right, that we should show the, uh, some of the cards too. So hey, 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 how about like a crazy idea? Why don't we just play a friend match and just show it in action? Okay, let's do that. And we can and let's we can talk through some of the ways that it's different from normal, like the original deck. So that's what we're gonna do. That's a great idea. Well, let's play it. Um, do you have a basic deck? Because I want to show newer. Because they're not gonna have all these cards. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, we can yeah. just build a quick deck. I tell you what, we can just build a quick deck. Uh, kind of somewhat like starter. Deck yeah, I'll, 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 I'll build a whole test deck then. You you build you build a start to other faction. How about that? All right, sounds good. So what we're doing that? We'll talk about a little some other stuff. Um, so we're having the uh, bowstring tension cup is uh, Wednesday. They they played it today. They sent me the videos. Um, so we are ready. We are queued up to show that and shoutcast it Wednesday. I do not watch the videos. Codexa will not watch the videos. We're just gonna play it 
and then call it live, I have figured out a way to slow it down because a lot of the problems I get is that people are blitzing through so fast that we don't have, I mean, I don't have a chance to even catch my thought, breath, much less catch the call the action thoroughly. Um, let's see. Some of you are having a problem with my Gwent, of course. Oh, there we go. All right, here we go. Uh, so oh, yeah, I'm build such a subpar deck is gonna be so beautiful. Oh yeah, I'm putting basic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them. Um, there's a whole bit. So this whole week, this is a little off, but I think it's Codex made a great call here. So this whole week is dedicated to beginners. So on the podcast, it's gonna be confusion, be a little difficult. I haven't figured out a way to make it more user friendly, uh, but we're gonna try to explain it very succinctly what we're doing for new players um, on the YouTube videos. You'll of course be able to see everything we're doing, and I, I th that's a great idea you made, Codex. So we're gonna do a, a we're gonna make a deck today. Um, they're gonna see put, mine. Put, put in all your gold. Hey, put in your put in golds though, and put gold? in all your premiums because we can show off premiums in this game as well. It's all right, epic. all right. So let me put let me put this on the screen here. Now that I've got it pulled up, and I apologize for everybody for the. This was a great idea, Codex. So it really was. Let me um, change it. All right. All right, so now you're looking at Gwent. All right, and it actually makes sense. We're doing a Gwent talk show to have play some Gwent. <laughs> yeah, All right, so, yeah. All right, so deck builder. So what are you doing? You're doing Northern Realms? Yeah, I'm doing Northern Realms. All right, I'll do Monster because um, it's kind of a, an easy one. Everybody starts off with Aridin. And there you see the foil Aridin. Um, just look at that card. I mean, if you, <laughs> it is... Absolutely gorgeous um, foil or, or, or special Aridin, whatever you want to call him. He's uh, he's phenomenal. Okay, so I'm gonna do a basic one. I'm not gonna tell. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all for the podcast what I'm doing. So when you first get this game, um, you have a starter deck, which is actually pretty competitive. Um, but one of the some of the cards you want to get early on. This is just my opinion on Monster. Is y the easiest one to build is a weather deck, right? So Monsters has some cards that are inherent for the weather synergy. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put some some Foglets in here. But Foglets, the strength of them, if you play, we talked about Gwent from The Witcher. They have like a, a pseudo muster ability. So it was called muster back then. Uh, here it's just, it, they just, they're summoned when fog comes out. So that's always a good thing to have. Uh, I'm going to play a lot of that. Play some Wild Hunt Riders. When you play one, uh, the other ones come out. So that's a good one. Um, I'm going to put some Wild Hunt Warriors in there. They synergize with weather in that when you play a weather on your opponent's side, unless they're weather immune it'll knock, or gold, it'll knock them all down to one point, which then the Wild Hunt Warrior can come in and ping them off the board and then thus get rid of them. So they can have a 27 strength unit. You play uh, snow, it's a one, and then all of a sudden uh, you, get, you knock them out of the game. So you want to have a little bit of removal with your, um, with your monsters. Now if you want to go... And this is a blue card, so maybe not as easy to get. One or two Ekamaras for a little bit of next level play, and I'll we'll break into that later. I'm not going to do too much right now on that. Um, but you do have a monster passive where whatever your last card played is will stay on the round. So Ekamaras are used by a lot of players as a as a you're going to play this card as your last card to make it a high strength card to move to the next round. So I'll explain more of that in a minute. Um, we're going to do some basic stuff here. Some Thunderbolt potions. Pretty basic. Two of those. Maybe a, uh, uh, maybe a, we'll just do a, one snow and one fog. Very basic. And then there's, the, you see how beautiful they are. The, uh, the foil versions of them. The snow, the guy's freezing, the crow's picking his head. You know, that old nugget. Silver cards. One thing about the Witcher, I'm, I'm really, uh, Is the mic sound like fun? Oh, is the mic not sounding good? You're... It's sounding good on the stream, but it's uh, it's cutting out for me. But I can still hear what you're saying, so that's good enough. Man, I don't know what it. Okay, sorry. So we're, I'm just building a very quick monster deck, and so one of the things about Gwent that makes it great for me, and I'm gonna let Codexo go through his deck, and Codexo, what you can do is tell me your deck, and I'll just place the cards as you talk about them. That's cool. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so let's let's start with um, let's start with bronzes. Then. Well, well, hold on, I'm, let me finish mine and then I'm gonna cut to you. No, start with mine now. <laughs> All right, so silvers, uh, we're gonna go. I, I, now, if I was building a good monster deck, I go with some of these purples right here and the the rarity you see on the bottom right oh, hand. A, 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 
couple. You can put in a couple epics, and uh, like yeah, epics aren't exactly hard to craft, but you can put in a legendary as well. I, I've done that. Like something that makes sense, but isn't like oh my god, pay to win. You know. All right, so we'll go with Marigold's Hailstorm is a good one because you'll come across a lot of uh, melee row, which is the first row decks, and you'll come across a lot of siege row in Northern Realms. So Marigold's Hailstorm is a good weather card to play. Um, so, and then you want to put, uh, if you get a chance, a water hag is really good because it weathers the back row and you don't have anything on the back row. So that'll, that'll work. And she's a blue, so she's easy to craft. Um, I'm looking for some good blues here. Well, I'm just going to put the witches in, uh, although that's anti-synergistic. So let's go with something blue. I'm looking for something kind of basic blue. Ugh. Um, have you put an ancient foglets? I didn't put ancient foglets in, but I ran. Out, I put in uh, some weather instead of them, mm. and Ekamara. But we're gonna, you know what? We're gonna put ancient foglets in because we'll keep it. We'll keep it basic. We'll keep it basic. Ancient foglets are really good because they'll gain strength while fogged, which synergizes very well with the foglets, obviously. And so silver, we're gonna go with. Uh, you know, you wouldn't be. You wouldn't be bad having a Demetrium bomb. You wouldn't be bad with having a scorch. You wouldn't be bad. This is basic decks now. I'm looking for something blue. You wouldn't be bad with that drowner. Old spear tip is always very good. And I'm looking for another blue. We're just gonna say you're gonna craft another weather, and we're gonna go with um, biting frost if I can find it. White frost. So that's a pretty solid. And then golds, if you get any, your chances are you're not gonna have any golds this early. But if you do get them, they're actually easy to craft in monsters. Woodland Spirits, 200 craft to do, and it gets you a fog. You want to go with uh, Heavy fr uh, Frost. Um, this spawns a frost. It's not very hard to craft. And then other than that, um, they're all pretty expensive. But we're just going to say you stumbled upon some. This one you get with the game, so we'll put a Geralt in there. And uh, the cheapest... Blue, I can think I'm taking a lot of time. I apologize. Let me just put something in. We'll do Grave Digger, Caretaker, and we're done. So we're going to do this as a starter deck. Shifu starter, kind of. <laughs> All right. You ready to check out some full test decks? Yes, and we're going to save and exit. Now, just so you know, for those of you that are watching, we are going to break down how to build decks later on in the week. But this is just a very solid um, monster weather and now we're going to build on my screen. We're going to give, give it to Codexel, and he's going to build a Northern Realm starter. All right, starting with your hero. All right, so I'm going to start with Folk Test because, like, that's the starter hero. He's he leaves some, he, he's a bit lackluster once control be, like becomes very prominent in terms of like the, the availability of good like scorch effects, for example. He still has a place in the match. To, at, all levels like that is something that's really worth pointing out like he's not so um i'm going to build something like uh, that's a bit of a tempo deck it let's do something real quick real quick let's, let's go, let me go ahead and call you on skype i think you're right you're breaking up pretty bad for me okay so okay, let's, let's, let's do that let's I'm gonna, do skype. i'm gonna start skype then yeah i'm sorry guys real quick uh, timeout. we're gonna put it on skype because i can feel i can hear him breaking up Fantastic. I love Discord. It's, it's great. All right. You call me when you're ready, bro. All right, bud. Let me see. Very sorry, guys, about this, but it is a podcast, and we don't want it to be, and, and y'all are listening, we don't want it to be horrible. Makes sense. He get in the call? Nope. Uh, stop that, and I'll call you. Live TV. It's always good. There we go. Yep. All right. All right. All right. Let me mute you on Discord real quick. All right. Great. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfectly. All right. Good. Here we go. All right. Let me go back to my. Uh, it sounds much better. Let me. Yeah. Get... Why don't we? Why weren't we doing this from the start? No, you, right, you, so... you said you said it, and I I said no. So it's my fault. All right. Here we go. So I um. The backbone of your deck is always bronzes, so you always want to have like a consistent theme that you're thinking about with your bronzes. I want to go for something that's quite reliable, that's cheap to make, and not just like all the pay-to-win cards. So 
I've chosen to make something that's tempo orientated and has a lot of starter cards with some tempo in the spells and the golds. Um, so I've gone for three Reaver Scouts. And this is to pull out more of your three ofs. In general, you want to run as many three ofs as possible. Like in Hearthstone, you want to run as many of two ofs as possible to increase the reliability and the consistency of your decks. In addition, Reaver Scouts pull out a bronze unit on the battlefield already. And since there are so many other three ofs, this should gain value quite a lot over the course of a game. Right, next up is uh, Blue Stripe Scouts. So that's also on the range. Do you want to some degree to stack up rows because of uh, buff cards that will be coming up, but Blue Stripe Scouts add four strength to any unit that's non-gold on your side of the battlefield, which synergizes really well with full test, and it's only rare, so it's not bad. Um, next up is uh, Reinforced Trebuchet. This is also rare, and at six strength, Decent Tempo has a really good ability that smacks something on the opponent's side of the board for one point every turn. And they're just a really good staple at any level of the game. They'll always get good value. I mean, if they get removed, they get field medic more often than not, and they get rezzed. Finally, there's Redania Elite. I'm including these because they're common, and they're not actually a bad card at all. They will be played mostly at the mid-level and below, but they're good. All right. And finally, we have the spells for bronze, which are two first lights. First lights are just fantastic. I mean, they're better at lower level because you're going to be facing more monster weather in general. But if they don't get used to clear weather, they still have a secondary effect that you can choose instead of clearing weather that allows you to pull a random bronze from your deck. Well, technically the top bronze from your deck, but for all human purposes, that's random, right? And... Finally, one Lacerate, which should make 15 bronzes. Is that correct for you? It is. It is. Right, so Lacerate is... Uh, I'm including partly because it's premium in my game, so you can just stare at how awesome it is later. But it's the card that is common, so you will generally pick this up before the more useful, arguably more useful Manticore Venom. Um, but yeah, Lacerate in there. So no right. Field Medics, right? No Field Medics. Um, field medics, I would include in other lists, but I decided to go for a non-field medic because, like, one of my mates started recently, and he didn't pick up three field medics for a good long time, so had to cross them instead. So it's fine. So let's move on to silvers. So you have at spells, dimeridium bomb because um, I mean, it's uh, pretty solid, and you actually pick it up. Generally, quite early on, because it's only a rare, you'll generally pick up a copy. And silvers, you can only run one of. So bronzes, you can run three of. Silvers and golds, you can only run one copy of in any deck, which means any excess, excess copies are completely redundant. But they generally have strong enough t uh, effects that a one of is absolutely fine. Next up is uh, Commander's Horn. So that adds five, five, sorry, four strength to five adjacent units for a total of 20 points maximum. It's in the starter deck, and it's pretty strong. It's uh, it's one of the best cards that you start off with, I would say. All right, next up is Reinforcement. This is a rare, so I'm including this because I want to uh, really emphasize the ability of my three obs in my deck. And finally, I'm including... No, actually, not finally. I'm including um, Priscilla. She's an epic, but she is so great that if you want to play Northern Realms she is definitely worth um, crafting. She pulls two cards from your deck that you can choose from and instantly plays them as is and that is pretty darn amazing considering she can be resurrected. Next up is Sila de Tanzerville. Uh, actually, uh, do, do, do you remember her from uh, The Witcher 2? Oh yeah, I, did, I certainly do. She betrayed you. Yeah. I mean, betrayed is a strong word. I mean, uh, she she was never really an ally in my book. Well, that's true. Yeah, she was. Uh, I'll never forget her because when I started playing the game, you know, she was there for helping you hunt the Karen. Spoiler alert for those who haven't played yet. Uh, and I thought, wow, what a bitch. <laughs> well, I mean, that's 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 pretty strong. I mean, I, I don't think I could ever condone this on like you know live TV. <laughs> um, um, 
Anyway, uh, she's in the starter deck, so that's why she's included. I mean, you will quickly want to move past her, because her effect is meh. But she is, I mean, she's a silver slot. She does the job. She does a job. Good job. All right. Next up is uh, Prince Stannis. Um, he is a spy, and spies are great. I mean, it's quite hard to grapple with the idea of why spies are good until you're a bit more advanced as a player. But I'm including it just so that if I do pull it, I can we can show off exactly why it is good. So hopefully that will happen. And I believe that's all the silvers. Yes, it is. All right, so let's move on to the golds. So I've gone a little bit greedy on the golds, partly because let's show off some premiums, and second uh, and uh, secondarily because uh, I I kind of want to to show how some of the even some of the less played golds can really bring a deck together. So I'm starting off with uh, Shani. Uh, this card is so good; it's basically all to include in any Northern Realms deck. It is amazing, and it's only an epic, so really one of the first targets you should make if you are aiming for a Northern Realms deck. It's just it's it, it's a medic that turns the target into a gold. I mean, what's not to like? And considering the Northern Realms passive is to add two strength to any gold that is basically uninteractable with, with for example, weather, it's a really good card. Next up is Philippa Alher. So, I'm running quite a lot of spells, and I wanted to justify this synergy by running Philippa. She is a legendary, but just to show some of the lesser played cards as well, just to show how they can be interesting in overall. Next up is Siri. Now, I'm including Siri mostly because she's premium, but she also comes free when you reach level 18, which means that she is an inevitable a step on the level ladder that any player can access after a certain point of uh, a certain time of playing it and for my you know one of my friends like he's only played for just over a week and he's basically made that level and gotten Siri this means that even though like regardless of her craft cost she will be accessible to all players which is part of the reason why she's in this deck finally there is Geralt just uh, vanilla Geralt because there are many Geralt's, some of which are using signs, and I presume all of the rest of them are going to be using signs, yeah. which are going to be quite interesting what Yurden is going to be, for example. Right, right. But, um, overall, Geralt, he is, an, like, you know, not the best golden game. That would be quite weird, considering you get a Geralt for free when you sign up to beta. Um, but he is solid enough that he can be a backbone gold to any deck when you're playing it early on. He's an epic. I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as you join it in the beta. <laughs> you're going to get a free Geralt. Awesome. And it's going to be premium, so you're going to see it in action. And I do believe that's all 25 cards. I just want to break in real quick. I had a, um, H, one, H, one of our uh, big um, contributors, said this to, to piggyback off of what you said when you're building your deck. This is from H8. Uh, Northern Realms is also good for beginners because it has a lot of good bronzes that are interchangeable. So you can run medics slash siege support slash ballistas instead of any of the non-reaver scout bronzes if you don't have enough of them and do pretty well. Absolutely. But uh, another thing I would say is that Northern Realms has generally pretty simple interactions. And that's what makes it good for learning the game at first. Because, like, it's just, how do I get more numbers? I'm good at numbers. More numbers. I mean... It's really, really simple to play them. It's intuitive. It it does what it says on the tin, and it does it well. So it's really, really good for learning the game. All right, I'm going to throw you an invite here. Right, wait. Uh, give me one second, and I'm good to go. All right. All right, send what you like. Oh, oh, oh of course, this is the bottom. I can't get to the bottom of the screen. Oh, no. Well, this is uh, this is something. Oh, here's yeah. a pro tip, by the way, guys, for anybody who's planning to play friends matches in Gwent, which is, I believe, a, like half the game. You really want to get friends and play them in Gwent. It's so much better. Um, if you want to say invite sent, just because the client's a bit buggy, you want to say to your friend that in the invite is sent because sometimes it bugs out and you don't get it, and then you just sit there staring at each other, being like, "Hey, Shifu, you sent the invite yet?" Yeah, well, since about five minutes ago. Yeah. I'm actually oh. having a hard time sending you the invite because... All right, I'll send it to you if you, yeah. if you just uh, just quit to the menu. Yeah, I can't. I have, the, my computer's kind of 
Because I have all these things open up. I can't click to the invite or close button. Uh, have you pressed escape? Yeah, let me try that. No, it's not working real well. Escape, alt tab, and then alt F4 if nothing works. Okay, well, I see my... Well, yeah, let me just close the game down. Slight technical difficulties. Right. Elevate music. Alright, let's try this again. Well, I mean, all right. We, we, we do need elevated music for sections like these, though. Like Right? Yeah. Da, 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 da. All right. <laughs> the podcast people are going to be like, what is all this? What is going on right now? You're not missing anything. You're missing just uh, black screens and craziness. It is the one time in the show where actually being on the podcast, you're not missing anything whatsoever. That's my fiance, by the way, behind me. I don't know if you can see her in the camera. Oh, my God. She is as hot as in all the pictures. See? All right. So you send me an invite when you're ready, man. All right. Close beta problems, right? She threw all of the cards. But well, one thing I, I really want to stress to people is that this is still in closed beta, and this game is actually looking ridiculously amazing. Like, there are some bugs here or there, but when this is get, when this gets released, I mean, I, I, I really wish that um, Hearthstone ceased to exist. I agree. I agree. Yeah, this game is so much better than Hearthstone. Uh, one of the things I love about it is it is not... It is so... It minimizes the RNG and rewards tactical playing a thousand percent more than Hearthstone. Mm, absolutely. So, well, okay, one thing to point out is that both of us have this uh, third-party program called Grant Tracker Up, which just shows extra things that you should probably ignore for now, but... Let's just focus on the mulligan phase. Do you want to go through your mulligan, man? Yeah. All right. Thank you. So I have, uh, you see, the, the, I have three wild hunt riders. Well, you don't want that because one will bring out the rest. So one of the good things about this monster deck is that early on you can drop a wild hunt rider and try to get something else. Well, you don't want foglets either because they summon the rest. So it makes mulligan choices pretty simple. Uh, so you just kick the foglet out, and there we go. We got a pretty good starting hand. I'll give it to uh, Codexel now with his starting hand. All right. So I've got first light and I know I'm against monsters so I'm probably going to hold on to that. I've got a Reaver Scout which means I can pull out extra stuff but I've got two Redeeming Elites so I'm going to throw away extra Redeeming Elites and make sure that I've got an efficient way to pull out those Redeeming Elites for later and I'm going to try to pull another spell because that would be nice um, to use with Philippa. But I'm going first so at the beginning of every game the, there is a coin flipped and uh, as you noticed like for me uh, this is showing the Northern Realm symbol, so that will change when it turns over to my opponent. And going first is generally a disadvantage because card advantage is generally a thing. But we'll talk about that later. I'm going to open up with a, a stable play. Play a Redeeming Elite. So this thing, uh, if three or more are played, then they convert to gold and they gain the Northern Realm's passive buff, which is pretty good. Okay, so now as a monster player, I have a couple of things I can do. Now... When you're just starting off, you don't know all the combinations. And generally, you're going to know that Redaining Elite, you're going to see if three or more hit the board, then uh, that's bad news. They turn into gold and your weather won't affect them. Also, full test ability is to copy a card, so that gives him automatically, you've got to think he has two in play. You've just got to kind of think that proactively to respond to it. So I can do a couple of different things. I can wait until another one hits the board before I deal with it and just play my pieces and get some creatures out there, which is what I'm going to do and throw it out there. That way, he doesn't really know yet that I'm a weather deck because I'm Aridin, so we still kind of don't tip our hand. Wait, how did you get three units out with one card? What? Yes, that is the benefit of the, no the, the, right? the muster ability. What it does is two things. One, gets more units in play. Also, it thins your deck. That's for a later discussion at a later time. And now we wait for our Northern Realms friend to continue. Wait, so you're going to pull cards out of your deck? I better do the same then. Otherwise, I'm going to fall behind. You one of us are not. So I'm going to play this Reaver Scout, and so I can choose the, the Redeeming Elite and pull out an extra card from my deck, which gains more power than playing it from my hand, and also thins out my deck to improve the quality of my later draws. Apparently my screen is too big, they can't see my cards. Oh, man. So, yeah, we're just going to, just trust me when I, okay, so, that stinks. <laughs> Well, for you, just name all your cards so I can remember them. Right? Heart. Easy. So I'll just play it blind. So we see that he has two Redaining Elites. So we do have a weather card in hand that we can use to shut that down. So we'll play it now. 
and it is going to shut down the first and third row. But our guys are weather immune, so we won't be affected by that weather. Whereas you see his... Oh, we had picked one. I'm sorry. I was too busy talking and looking at other stuff. At that particular point, we should have... It used to be both. Now it's one or the other. We should have picked rain on that case. I was uh, out of it there. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Can't forget BM. <laughs> so... I made a mistake, and now we see the, uh, the the penalty for that. But you want to you want to have that card because it does one or the other, and we could have done rain, and it would knock his units down to one. So I have a very specific reason for making this play, but like you know, I, I'm more competitive than this guy, so I'm gonna keep it a secret. Ray Groove. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna play a boost right guy and just buff my back row because he made a horrendous mistake. That like, I mean, come on, bro, you're rank 15. I know, up. I know, it's bad. Or I could have been baiting you into something. So we'll have to see. Oh, God. He's going to rain. He's going to rain. Oh, no. So what we do here is we play oh. this card. It brings down the rain. But if he has a clear skies, it'll bring that card back up to 11 and 7. Oh. Oh. Not bad. I just, I just, Not oh, bad what do I do now? <laughs> what, what do I do now? <laughs> oh, I guess I'll play Philippa. And play my clear skies at the same time and draw a card with it. Very nice. So there's the benefit of using Philippa. That's a really good combo. And then I draw a card. Oh, such value. <laughs> All right. So he has 11 strength on the board. Chances are we're not going to get better Scorch value than that. Is there probably going to become gold? So we'll go ahead and use our Scorch, take that 11 out. Um, it would have been better had he not buffed it. We could have taken both of them. But because he buffed it, we only got one. Not bad at all. That's pretty good, my friend. It's pretty good. I mean, I'm not sure what I do with my life anymore. I guess I'll just play another one of these. The taunts. Do you hear this? Do you hear this? This is a friendly game and the taunts that are flying out of this man. It's, it's crazy. Friends with friends, man. That's what you can do in Whip with friends, but you can't do online, huh? So we have <laughs> so we have a choice. So he has 26 points. We have 13 points. Um, I have one more card than he has. Um, I got to calculate. This is for advanced, but I, at a certain point, you want to calculate the risks of going on can you legitimately win the deck with what you have or to keep card advantage? Since this is just a beginning game, we're kind of just learning and playing. We're going to go ahead and we are going to... I don't really have any cards. Y'all can't see that interact with his back row. So I'm just going to try to go with as many points as I can to keep it kind of competitive. Oh, that's that's a good play, man. That's a 12-point bronze card. That's, that's strong. So I got... Like, that is known as putting out tempo, right? Putting out points very, very quickly for, with very few cards. So I've got to keep up with that, right? Like, so I've got to play it the highest tempo thing from my hand as well. So I'm going to play this guy, pull out one from my deck, which does all the aforementioned thinning, and buff one of the back guys again. Plus, each player can only run one Scorch, so I know that's a perfectly safe play to make. And you see, that was a brilliant play. You see how a two-point Reaver Scout can turn into a ten-point play. That's just really good. The two point brings out the four, which makes it a six point play. The four point adds four points to another card. Six plus four is ten. So with one two point card, he made ten points. That's just extreme value and a really good play. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm pretty sure that this round is lost. So what I'm going to do is play my biggest card in hand, or in this case, summon Erid into the board, who's an 11. What that does is two things. One, it makes sure my opponent has to play a card to win. Two, when he does, I pass, and that 11 sticks to the board for me. Hopefully. Also, you want to right-click your Aridin just to show that off, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what I'm thinking is now he's offering a draw and on even cards, which means that I have to consider the quality of my hand and thinking if we both draw and the, last, the next round becomes the last round that we both have to win, is my hand better than his? And he's got an 11 keep because of the monster's passive, whereas I get nothing. So I probably have a big incentive to continue. Um, I'm going to copy this because that gives me the most points. Crush those vermin. And because there are three Redania Elites, they'll all turn to gold now and gain two points each, which is quite a big point play. That's uh, 11 plus 6, which is 17, which will... I mean, if I wasn't sure he was going to pass already because, you know, I can hear him, <laughs> I would probably assume that that would be a good way to try to win the round. Exactly, and now as a monster player, I, all, it, all I have in my hand is weather cards, a dimeridium bomb, and a foglet. So I really had nothing to play. I was pretty much, that was the best play I could hope for. I'm going to go ahead and lose. He used his hero ability. 
I'm feeling actually pretty good. You can lose a round in Gwent. You don't need to go all in in every round to win. Technically, that was the best play I could have made to go into round two ahead. I have one more card in hand than he does. He, because he won, he starts the next round, which technically gives me two card up with 11 points on the board. So I'm in a really good position, even though I lost the first round. So it's worth noting that, like, unlike in some other games, like, the other player, after the person passes, still has an option to play, even when they're ahead. So in theory, there are some cards that I could play right now that can give me more value. Something like that will make one of my units stick, for example, is often playable afterwards. On the other hand, here I have nothing useful to do, so I'm just going to pass and go to round two. So, one thing you'll notice is that Barring uh, the certain exceptions, the player who goes, who wins the round will always go first. Unlike in the first round where it's just a coin flip, I'm always going to go first here. And I'm an entire card down. So I'm going to develop my reinforced trebuchet because I want to get some point value from this card at some point. Maybe it was wrong, but I'm not sure exactly how long this round will go on for. I don't have anything in my hand, really. So I'm just going to put the fog down. And the reason I put the fog down is it does give me four more points because it summons those foglets. Mm. Although, because nobody runs two foglets, I know you have a foglet in hand. So it's <laughs> right. something worth exploiting. <laughs> That's true. I'm not afraid. Ah, brilliant. Oh, man. So I'm playing a spy because I won the first round. And I don't care about winning this round. So this is just a delay tactic to gain a card and dig deeper into my deck for my best cards. And that puts that's a great play. And that puts me in a tough position because even though I have 26 and he has six, I realize that if I pass now, there's a very high likelihood that he could easily beat me and win the round. And I have to win. Now, that lets this fall with play for me is a stall tactic. I'm just putting out a card that I really don't want in my hand to try to dwindle his resources down going into round three. So, because I won round one, and I don't care about winning round two, I should dump my worst cards right now, because they won't be good next turn, so, next round, so I'm going to dump this, and get six value, which is not insignificant, but I don't really care. I'm just trying to dump my bad cards. Mojo said, finally he understands how to play this game. <laughs> so, yeah, Mojo, thank you, thank you for, your, for your coaching, senpai. Now, I, I, learned so much. I am still screwed with the cards I have in my hand, but I don't want I can't pass. So what I want to do is try to like he is dumping his least valuable cards. Well, right now, this biting frost is not hurting me by playing it, and it could possibly hinder him if he has any melee units. So I'm just dumping cards right now. So even though this card is theoretically useful in this in the next round, I'm concerned with the hand texture that I've got that like if he has weather next round some of my cards are going to be actually fairly useless and he's got a decent keep because the Eredin is the last thing that he played either with his hero power or from his hand therefore I want to continue a bit more and actually apply some points pressure on my opponent so I'm going to clear the skies right now get rid of the foglets and get rid of some weather so that my hand becomes opened up a little bit more And again, for me, I'm kind of, well, I'm not kind of, I'm in a bad position. I don't have anything, but in my hand, I have a Dimeridium Bomb, I have White Frost, I have a Wild Hunt Warrior, and I have Spear Tip. I want to try to keep the five and the four, at least for points in round three. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and play White Frost. It'll summon, get me six more points on the board. Well, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to summon the Fog, the correct choice this time, and get six more points on the board. So at this point, I, I, like, I'm 15 points behind. Actually, I'm 14 points behind, so not too bad. But again, I'm concerned that this is the kind of deck that might run a lot of fog. And that means that any range units that I have at next round will have diminished value. So, but I can influence his keep for next round, so I'm going to play my Seal of Detanserville and hmm. hit his Eridan 4. The foglets aren't the keep, so that means that the Eridan should be reduced from 6 to 4. Oh, sorry, 6 to two, which will make next round much better in my favor. Now, for me, that was a great play on his part. It knocked one of my big cards down, so he's forcing me to play cards here. So I'm going to play the Wild Hunt Warrior, which we talked about in the beginning. If a card is affected by weather, it can then neutralize it. So that was a six-strength card that got knocked down to one, and by eliminating it, I buff myself two, 
which makes it a nice eight point swing for me for the weather. By the way, one thing I wanted to just point out is that uh, I think Diamond Iridium bombing your melee row is a better play. Yes. Yeah, that, that is a good play. That it would have made the error in the 11, 11 and it right. would have made Stennis at 12, and it would have made the 11 the keep, which would have been much better. That's good. You're right. But anyway, two cards against two cards. He's got a seven keep. I don't think it's going to get much better than that. I mean, like, I know his hand, so that's besides the point. But, like, you, if, assuming I didn't know his hand, I think that this is the best situation I could get. So I'm going to pass right here and bring my cards against his cards plus seven, but overcomable. And what he's saying is because we both have two cards in hand, I've won the round. So I go first, which technically means that he has card advantage going into the last round. And by card advantage, that means that he will play last, which is huge, especially against Monster Weather. And if you run against them, you want to play last so you can then cancel out any weather effects they'll have on the board, hopefully. All right, I'm going to start off and just play um, a big Ooh. card. Okay, so that's some points. Um, I'm going to play the Reinforced Trebuchet because that is, has an extended round effect, i.e. the earlier you play, the more value you get. So makes sense to play it first, right? Right. I am in a difficult situation. I have Old Spear Tip and I have a Dimeridian Bomb. I know that he plays probably plays a lot of Reinforced or Back Row stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and play Old Spear Tip in the back. And set up and hopefully play some more uh, Siege Row units. Alright, so now it's time to play Shani because I want to res something with high tempo and that will mean probably Seal of the Tanzerville. I mean, once you have better cards, oh. there will be much better cards than uh, Seal of the Res. I promise you that. But here we yeah. go. And Sila becomes gold, so she gains two extra points and replays the effect that she has. So that makes that puts me two points ahead, and I'm very comfortable. Now, because I saved the Dimeridian Bomb at the end, I can go ahead and hit his golds, which will knock that's not very much, but it knocks four points off of him, uh, which puts me up in the head by two. And hopefully, his last card is not well one. Hopefully, his last card's pretty crappy. Well, I mean, considering the reinforced trebuchet hits for one. That means that if I make a one-point play into the Frost, I still win, so that's unfortunate for you. Very true. But because I had complete freedom to keep my best cards for the last round, I have Premium Geralt, which you can just show off by right-clicking that. So he gets buffed by two, but he's a 14-point play, so um, pretty decent, uh, so certainly early on, and I win 28-14. to 14. And that was very well done. And there we see the user interface, and I don't think I'll oh, kick it off. I thought maybe we could hold on to the board for a second. And then it breaks it down to points by round, uh, and he won, played very well, and he won using Geralt. GG, man. Well played. GG, good job. A real good job. Well, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, that actually brings us to the end of our hour. Um, and we're, we, now that we've made the decks and we have some different things, we can look at. Let's go back to the. Well, yeah, we can look at, let's look at the decks again. We can look at continuing this and breaking cards down, looking at different factions in the in the beta and then in forward, how to build decks, how to tweak it down all week long. And remember, Wednesday, we are going to shoutcast the championship of the Bowstring Cup, the Bowstring Tension Cup for Coil Gaming. So we're very excited about that. Um, do you have anything you want to sign out with, man? Um, thanks for watching guys and I hope this was informative and useful for anybody out there who's new. Mojo, I'm looking at you. <laughs> We're going to cut this video down because it actually turned out to be a pretty cool little snippet of an informative game that we can use on YouTube. Um, and I apologize that it went kind of in different directions, but I think it went really well for oh, teaching us. I, I, I like the right direction you took, man. Yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it went well. So thank you all for watching. Shifu the Cards, Code Exhale signing out. I remember, we, are the, we aren't the longest-running late-night talk show in Gwen History for nothing. We bring a lot of information. <laughs> so thank you all for watching, and we will see you tomorrow. Same Gwent time, same Gwent channel. See how I did there? Good night, guys. Good night, Ciao. everybody. Y'all have a good night. Thank you for watching. <laughs> all right. I'm signing out in three, two, one.